Hello, I'm Simone Masiero and in this demo we are going to talk about NPM. Probably all of you already know what NPM is, it's basically a huge database of JavaScript packages and you might have already used it. This is because NPM is the largest and most used software registry in the world. We will have uh, an overview about it, uh, followed by a brief discussion comparing NPM and other options like Yarn. So just to start, one thing that you might not know is that contrary to the belief of many, NPM does not stand for Node Package Manager. Instead, it stands for Never Poke Monkeys or Nickel Palladium Manganese or, well, not exactly. In fact, there is a whole open repo on GitHub just to list all the three possibly funny composition of words starting with N, P and M. And one of those will randomly appear as the title of uh, the NPM webpage. This is just to stress the fact that NPM does not mean uh, Node Package Manager. The name was originally created on top of the bash command package make inst, a function used to run make install of a package. Now NPM is used as uh, a recursive backronym, abbreviation for NPM is not an acronym. Now, back on the trail, you also may all know what NPM is used for. The first rule of a programmer is uh, do not reinvent the wheel. Well, NPM has a lot of wheels. You can use it to discover, use and manage JavaScript components for your project. NPM has three main parts, the website, the CLI and the repository. Let's start from the website. You can use npmjs.com to browse for packages. Although this is not the only alternative to browse for NPM packages, like we have Yarn website or React parts, for example, is the most used and it works really well. Since this is a browser, you can basically just search for a component you aim to find or uh, just a description of that and NPM will then propose you a list of possible matches that you can uh, sort with different filters. Each package will contain a detailed readme file with direction for installing, configuring and using the code in your package, as well as any other helpful information like example of usage. It will also give you information about dependencies of a package, statistics on the usage of the package, useful for, uh, for you to select between similar choices, and a lot of other useful information, including the option of simulate a package on RunKit and try it before installing. So once you're convinced that a package is the right one for your project, you can move to the terminal and install it. So let's build a super simple example to play with Node. First of all, we can check the version of npm we are using. Now we're running on 6.9.0 and in general it's a good idea to have one which is at least 5.0, we're gonna see why. And with npm init, we can initialize our folder. It will ask us about um, some information like the name, the version, the description, and a bunch of other stuff. Once initialized, we can see that in our folder, we now have a package.json file. This file is super important and basically it does three things. It lists all the packages that our project depends on. Now we don't have any, but we will soon see, see them. It specifies the version of our package and basically it makes our build reproducible and therefore easier to share with other developers. Is it also possible to set each default configuration and by just running the init command with the flag yes or just y, the package.json will be created using the default configuration, skipping the manual insertion of each field. Now that our folder is initialized, we can proceed installing all the components we want. In our case, Lodash, a JavaScript utility library. Installing it is really easy since we just have to run npm i, which uh, stands for install, and the name of the package, Lodash in our example, and npm will download it. At this point, we can notice that three things changed. First of all, our package.json is automatically updated, keeping track of our new dependencies together with uh, its version number, and we will talk about this. Then we, we now have a new file, the package lock.json, which is solely used to lock dependency to a specific version number. We will tackle this um, in a moment. 
And finally, we now have a node model folder, which is a collection of third party packages, which um, we are using directly or indirectly as uh, sub dependencies. Now that Lodash is installed, uh, we can just use it, uh, building a super simple example to print some numbers. We just need to specify the package with the require function and it's all magically working. Notice that the node module folder contains the code of our packages. So if we delete this folder, our program will crash since it cannot find Lodash anywhere. But with the information listed in our package.json, we can reinitialize our project and all its dependencies will be reinstalled. It sometimes may happen that you want to install some components that are only needed for local development and testing of your project, and you don't want to ship those along with your software. For example, Gulp Live Reload, which is a real-time refresh plugin to reload the page when you change the source. With npm, you can install a package with the dash dash save dash dev flag, and those will be added to the dev dependencies. Now, if we delete our node models folder and we reinstall all the dependencies with the dash dash production flag, we will see that only lodash will be reinstalled. So before going on, let's talk for a while about the semantic versioning of npm. Basically, each package starts from version 1.0.0. When the author decides to release a new patch version where he fixes some bugs without breaking the API, the last number will be incremented. When instead of a bug fix, some new features are added to the package, the author will publish a new minor version, incrementing the middle number. The first one, finally, gets incremented only when the updated version is no longer backward compatible, since the API changed. With the package.json file, we can give instruction to npm about which version of our dependencies we want to download. If, for example, we want an exact version, we will only need to put the exact version number. If we insert a tilde before the version number, npm will download the latest possible patch version. With a caret sign, the latest minor version will be downloaded, and this is the default behavior on npm. Finally, if we only put an asterisk, npm will download the latest possible version, which may cause some problem with our code. Staying updated with the newest version of our dependencies is quite important. If we install a package like Gulp, for example, with a lot of sub dependencies, we will end up having a lot of components in our node module. And the more dependencies we have, the higher the probability that we will introduce bugs in our project. One way to mitigate this problem is updating all the version of our dependencies. npm offers some great tools to automatize this. There are two basic commands to check our dependencies. The first one is npm outdated, which will produce a short summary of all the packages for which we are using an outdated version. The second and most important one is npm audit, which is a tool to scan our project for vulnerabilities. This will produce a list of security issues found in our dependencies, ranked from low to high. Audit also automatically installs any compatible updates to vulnerable dependencies with uh, the audit fix command. Last but not least, if a package is no longer needed, you can just remove it from your dependencies with the rm command, an alias for remove. Finally, the last useful function that I want to show in this demo about the package.json file is the possibility to create script to automatize the execution of your code. For example, we can create a start script, which we can just run with npm start in the terminal, simplifying the execution of your project for whoever wants to install it. Now, so far, we play with packages that already exist on the npm repository but we can also contribute to that uh, publishing our own projects. In order to do that, the first thing you need is an npm account. You can sign in using the npm website and then log in from your terminal. Then, in order to publish a project, all you have to do is running the npm publish command. But before doing this, be sure to choose a name which respects the npm guidelines. 
Now, if we hit publish, we can check the result on our profile page and we can see that our package is there and uh, ready to be installed. If we want to update it, we can use the version command, specifying one of the three possibility, which are patch, minor or major, and we will see that our version will change accordingly. However, even if this is enough to modify our local copy, we still have to update our remote project. We can easily do that by running again the publish command. If we are no longer interested in maintaining a package, but we want it to remain available for users to install, or if there are some projects that depend on our package, we can deprecate it. To do that, we can just run the deprecate command, specifying a message which will be shown when users search or download our package. We can even decide to completely remove our project from the NPM registry. NPM guidelines suggest to deprecate packages instead of unpublish them, but if our package has no dependence, so no other project depends on us, we can permanently remove it from the npm registry by using the cli command unpublish. Notice that we can decide to unpublish a package within three days from the initial publish. Then this option might be not available. Now we have seen how npm works and how we can use it, simplifying our life as developers. However, there is no rules without turns and there are still some problems with npm. We could discuss this for days, literally, but just to summarize, we can examine three main aspects, performance, security, and general policies. Until version 5.0 of NPM, things were quite messy. Downloading dependencies from the registry was a really slow process since packages downloads were not parallelized. On top of this, they were also low to run code on installation automatically and on the fly, even from their sub-dependencies. While this feature had some conveniences, uh, it raised a lot of security issues. Finally, since the package.json uh, doesn't specify the exact version of the packages, there were a lot of problems. The usual, uh, it works on my machine. This was a serious problem, since even if you specify all the exact, exact um, version for your direct dependency, you can control the nested dependencies of, um, of the package you're using. All of these pitfalls and many others raised the need for a new way to manage packages. And this was the point when uh, Yarn came into the scene. Yarn, first released by Facebook in October uh, 2016, was an attempt to fix this consistency, security and performance issues, which a lot of developers were claiming to have uh, experience with NPM. They introduced a yarn.log file, which uh, fixed dependencies to specific versions, they improved the security of the system, and overall performance was dramatically increased by the introduction of a cache system, and a parallelized way to download packages. As of today, NPM solved a lot of these problems too. We have seen that uh, we now have a package lock.json, which basically has the same, um, uh, does the same thing of the yarn lock file. And after version 5.0 of, of NPM, you can feel that much improvement using yarn. And just as a side note, even the API of the two systems are quite similar, maybe just a little less, um, less verbose for Yarn. So which one is the best one? As of today, in my opinion, there is not a sure winner, but if I have to choose, I will probably go with, um, with Yarn for two main reasons. The first is that uh, Yarn has recently switched to version 2 which is still on its early days, but uh, lets you play with a lot of new features like plug and play, which is a new way to handle the node module folder so that you don't, um, don't have to save the same packages for every project. And about this, the same problems was also addressed by some other really, really valid uh, package managers like uh, PMPM. You can go and search for it. And number two, several, several large companies around the world are investing in Yarn and therefore they, they can identify most of the bugs very early and quickly resolve all the problems with, um, without any issues, basically. Although this is not a strict point in favor of Yarn, since 
Also, the NPM community is quite powerful. So this concludes our um, our demo. I hope it was useful for you to understand a little bit more about package managers. And uh, yeah, remember to to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more demos like this. So see you in the next master.